uh, while Dr. Kumaraswamy was talking and saying that his last appeal was basically to look at the overall direction, what's happening on the macroeconomy, all the sensible things are happening. I was actually looking at him and thinking that one thing he did not say is that sensible people are also taking control. Don't you agree? And uh, I uh, wanted to say uh, that in a broader context, we have, uh, we have Dumi Ratnayaka, who is the chairman of the BOI. We have Tilan Vijay Singh, who has just taken over to give leadership to the PPP uh, unit. Uh, we are really going in a direction. And I think we need to get together to actually change this. Uh, if I think about probably what the priorities are for us immediately, it's stability and consistency. Every time I meet the private sector, I hear the word consistency. So we've taken it on board, stability and consistency. We need structural reform and we need an investor-friendly environment. This is the direction in which we must go. When I see the word transform, transformation and all this, I get a little worried. I get a little worried because I often wonder what actually does it mean. Transformation means a lot of hard work. You know, we need data, for example, and data is very difficult to get. If you can get hold of the data, you're going to spend a lot for the data. And we need to rethink this. We need research. We need research institutions. Our decisions have to be based basically on really fact. You see, we have agriculture, which is 10% of the GDP, 28% of the labor force. And if you ask questions about the use of land, and the land usage, you're not going to get all the information you actually require. We have a meteorological department, which tells us about the flood after the flood has come. And I'm saying these things really not to put anyone down. But what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make is that we have to be more scientifically based we need the information, we need the research. Transformation is not what worked for me or my company working for the country. Transformation is a lot more than that. It's about really having the data, really having the knowledge, having the skills and the ability to actually uh, deliver, getting rid of the information deficit. In Colombo, we have lots of opinions. We have lots of silver bullets. And I'm looking beyond the silver bullets. That's why I'm saying, how do we actually fix the problems that we are facing? Uh, Dr. Kumaraswamy went through the economy very quickly and at the risk of uh, repeating very quickly some things, uh, clearly the message is that things are getting into place. GDP growth rates are 2015, 4.8, 2016, 4.4. This year we thought we'll get to five, but we have to contend with the drought and the floods. So there are issues. The global situation, economic recovery is still not very firm. You heard about monetary policy, fiscal policy. We have the benefit of the lifting of the fishing ban, the benefit of GSP coming in, and yet to see what it really translates for. Inflation is targeted and in inflation is going in the right direction. I think by the end of 2018, we'll probably have it at much better levels than we have it presently. The current account deficit has come down from, 2000 and from, from in 2016 from 2.4, and it's coming down further. Gross official reserves in April, when we were talking in forums like this, was $5 billion. It's $7 billion as of today, $7 billion. Sovereign bond was done, syndicated loans have been done. The exchange rate, many criticized us when we moved to a flexible exchange rate. Every adjustment has its cost, but I think making the right decision and sticking with the right decision is critically important. FDIs below par, you know what we got last year, but we are a lot more optimistic. Uh, there was reference to the Hambantota port deal. Even as we talk, decisions are being made. We are going to sign the Hambantota port deal. We are going to go with it. We have negotiated, and we have negotiated hard. 
We are going to basically reap maybe 1.1 billion dollars, maybe 400 billion dollars of that just in this year. Fiscal outcomes, uh, revenue has gone up from 12 to 13.3 to 14.2. The budget deficit has come down from 7.6 in 2015 to 5.4 and probably a little under that in 2017 going to the long-term target of getting it down to 3.5 with the governor of the central bank mentioned as if he thinks as the key factor for macroeconomic instability bringing it under control the extended fund facility with the imf we've just con concluded the second review successfully and sometimes people throw it out and say why do you actually need this we need it because it brings in a certain level of discipline into the economy. It helps the country to maintain its country rating. It helps our banks to maintain and steady their ratings, which in turn has an overall impact. So we are going in the right direction. I won't refer to the FTAs because much was said about the FTAs. And one thing you can be sure is, it doesn't matter who's on the street, this government will continue for its full term till at least February 2020, when it will be completing four and a half years. It's not that we can, cannot deal with issues on the street. We are trying to deal with issues on the street in keeping with the mandate that we have received. That's really the struggle. That's really the issue in this period in which we are, this interim period in which the country is transforming its economy. I would like to very briefly conclude by saying about a few things that we are doing immediately. As we talk this week, we are bring, bringing into parliament the foreign exchange bill. We are doing away with the decade-old Exchange Control Act. It's a conceptual move away from control exchange, control to exchange management. It's a conceptual move away from the government thinking that it's the owner of the hard-earned foreign exchange of its exporters to the exporters being the owner and not the government. That's the conceptual change in this. There was a criminalization of exchange control violations in the previous act. We have removed that criminalization. There were prison sentences that were possible in the old act. We are moving away from outward control for incentives for exchange being brought into the countries. Those who have pending cases and violations could regularize by remitting and basically paying a penalty fee. If they remit it into government securities, even that fee will not be applicable. So there is no need for the exchange controller or the minister to approve. We are moving towards more a rule-based regulatory system. And that would be this week in parliament and we will have that exchange control bill passed in parliament this week. We have also, as you know, presented an Inland Revenue Act in parliament. It's a new act. It's a new act. It's an act which takes away discretion from the minister, and it's also going more to a rule-based system. You don't have to queue up outside the Ministry of Finance trying to get your exemptions. We are moving away from that kind of economic management. We are moving to a system which will say this is the income tax, this is the tax table, this is what you actually pay. For corporate taxes, two regimes. One a concessionary regime and the other one the normal regime. There will be no exceptions, exemptions in the new system. Uh, there will be some favored industries and that's going to cause some controversy, but that is why there are two to, uh, 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 if you want, rates that are going to be applicable there. This act has been drawn largely by the Sri Lankan bureaucracy. And obviously, people have issues with it. Politically speaking, the government has an overall objective. Dr. Kumaraswamy talked about level uh, growth across the country. Not just a favored Western province, but far more level growth. I do not agree with the investments in Hambantota. I think they were big mistakes, and we should not forget it. 
But the real question is, what do you make out of a mistake that has already been made? I'll give you a simple example. I went to the Hambantura airport when I was a member of the opposition to look at that airport. Our policy formu formulators and our politicians should have actually asked the question, 10 years ago, did we actually need that airport or did we actually need a second runway at the international airport in Colombo? Those were the kinds of questions that were not addressed. But the question now is, as an economist, once those investments have been made, we need to make sure that we are able to get the maximum out of those buried investments. And therefore, we are moving on Hambantota. We will have that deal signed very quickly. So there are issues on the Inland Revenue Act for sure. Many chambers, many industry groups have come and seen us. There are many challenges in the courts. We welcome those challenges because what we are doing, we want to do it upfront, we want to do it transparently. And when we adopt the amendments in Parliament, we will certainly take into account the directions of the court. Not only that, the suggestions that have been brought up from many interested parties, all the reasonable suggestions will be included when we move the amendments. Some of the issues that came up were the protection of taxpayer rights. It was on depreciation, on capital allowances, as was mentioned. Then the applicable date of the law and also implementation. We certainly have in mind to have a smooth implementation. Some of the things that are coming in the future are the audit bill, the customs uh, ordinance, are some of the things that we are looking to come up in the future and maybe over the next six months so that we get the legislative framework broadly in place as we go into our next budget. On the infrastructure side, you know that we connected last week all the banks to customs. The Parliamentary Accounts Committee, PAC, appointed an all-party committee, which I was chair of. And the point of the committee was to look at how the leakage in government revenue could be minimized. Three institutions in government bring 85% of government's revenue. Customs, inland revenue, and the excise department. The other 300 institutions bring only 15% of the revenue. And there's an all-party consensus, and a report has been published, that by using information technology, we can reduce the leakage. Let's face it, business is corrupt. That is why government is corrupt. And one way of dealing with systemic corruption is to use information technology to reduce the, the discretion given to politicians and given to high state officials. That is the way forward for this country. And therefore, I want to pay tribute to the customs and to the central bank and to Lanka Clear and the bankers and all those who are involved in a very short time in actually putting all the banks online in terms of customs payments. If I were to close, if there's one more very important thing that we need to do very quickly, that is to do in the procurement space. We need to have e-procurement. We need, like the countries in the region, even countries like Bangladesh, India, Nepal, and Afghanistan have gone ahead of Sri Lanka on e-procurement drastically reducing the number of days. In, in, in Bangladesh, they reduced it to 29 days from 51. In India, from 90 to 135 days to 35 days. In Korea, end to end, two hours, procurement can be completed. And the cases are very compelling. This is what we need to do. We have a national procurement commission. For, therefore, they can give policy direction. We do not need new legislation, but we need an agency for its operation. We need to invest in it. We need to go for government electronic procurement. All ministries must publish tender notices. They must provide the information. Bids need to be received in that way and awards made. We know that even today, the situation is unsatisfactory. A newspaper, a professor writing in the newspaper said, that the cost of building a kilometer of highway had gone up by 50% in the last three years. This is unacceptable. We need to bring these costs down. So one thing that we will focus on 
over the next few months is actually in delivering and getting everybody around the table to cooperate so that we have an electronic procurement system. Thank you again for inviting me uh, to share these few thoughts. Thank you.